It's been months since it happened, and most people have lost track of time. It's been weeks now since the sirens stopped. Now more than ever, everybody's on edge, and the hair-raising silence that blankets the streets is only interrupted by the random gunshots, the sound of glass breaking and screams echoing off the crumbling walls of this dying world. You haven't had a good sleep in weeks. Your nerves simply won't allow it. And rightly so, because if you fell asleep, they could easily get the jump on you. You know they could come barreling through that door at any minute. Scavengers, thugs, marauders. Those rats that just leech off anything sacred that remains. But the problem is you've been awake so long that your mind is playing tricks on you. You start having these mild hallucinations. As you sit there perched up staging a vigil by your window like you do most of the time, out of the corner of your eye you see something, or you keep thinking that you see something, but maybe it was nothing. Was it a hallucination? Or was it somebody who was actually trying to get the jump on you? Are you just delusional? Because you haven't slept, it's becoming harder and harder to discern the thoughts in your head from the stimuli actually coming through your senses. Did you hear that? Or did you just think that? Or is somebody actually watching me and waiting for me to just fall asleep so they can barrel through that door? Now you've been pumping yourself full of caffeine pills to stay awake because things have just been so crazy as of late. And you know that if you went down now, you'd be out cold for at least eight hours flat and nothing would probably wake you up from that slumber. But there's no other choice. There's people depending on you to stay awake and stand guard at this post. And then out of nowhere, you, you hear something. The faint, indiscernible sounds of people talking. And then you realize that you passed out. And as you come to, it becomes more clear that they're talking about you. You open your eyes and you're greeted by the butt end of a rifle. Sleep is probably one of the least talked about aspects of post-disaster readiness. There are many over-the-counter stimulants that will keep you awake or even depressants to put you to sleep. However, both of these have their drawbacks. While these stimulants might provide you temporary increases in alertness and even brain function, in the long run, of course, it's going to be accompanied with a crash and it will have negative impacts on your ability to mentally function. Make sure you stay tuned till the end of this video because I'm also going to tell you a secret on how you can get to sleep very quickly. You know, I look at my dogs and how quickly they are to wake up at the slightest sound no matter how deep of a sleep they're in. It's almost like they're immediately up and we as human beings have lost that because we're out of sync with our sporadic sleep schedule which we had for so many years throughout our evolution. And it's unrealistic to think that you would be able to maintain a normal sleep schedule that we've come to enjoy in industrial society with the eight hour workday under these types of adverse circumstances, especially in a lawless post disaster world where you have to be constantly vigilant. Remember that before we were domesticated and there were all these threats in the natural environment, we were required to be constantly alert and at the ready even when we are sleeping but we have lost that as people so if a crazy war-torn apocalyptic crime infested post-disaster situation like that presented itself again the relatively slow reaction time of a person who's in a deep sleep compared to any other animal in the animal kingdom is a disadvantage in one of these situations so having good sleep hygiene is great and all and you know it'd be great if you could sleep in 90 minute intervals and get your 7.5 hours of sleep every night. Unfortunately, that may not be the safest way to go if things get really bad and you were the only one looking out for you and yours. So one possible solution under these conditions is something called biphasic or polyphasic sleep. Now, this is defined by numerous short periods of sleep throughout the day instead of one long period of sleep. So instead of sleeping just eight hours a night, you're sleeping maybe an hour and a half for several times a day. Another way to conceptualize this is the idea of having three square meals a day. 
this is an artificial creation that only came about because of the eight hour workday. Prior to that, breakfast, lunch, dinner were far more fluid and meal times would vary depending on the availability of food for one and whatever the situation might call for. Similarly, what we call normal sleeping patterns today are also quite suspect. Now, there's little to no scientific evidence that suggests that biphasic or even polyphasic sleep, depending on how you do it, is going to be more healthy in the long run. It may be the only option you have in the short term. And this is something which is practiced and promoted by militaries around the world where soldiers are not going to be able to get a full eight hours of sleep. There are some anecdotal accounts, however, of people who swear that they are more productive using this polyphasic sleep pattern. What it's going to allow you to do if the shit hits the fan is get your short, rejuvenating bursts of sleep while never having to fully slip into a deep slumber where you're going to be vulnerable to attack or be caught off guard by an emergency. For example, Canadian Marine pilots report that under extreme circumstances where sleep cannot be achieved continuously, Research on napping shows that 10 to 20 minute naps at regular intervals during the day can help relieve some of the symptoms of sleep deprivation and thus allow people somewhat regular function in the field. However, they do caution that levels of performance achieved using this polyphasic sleep pattern to replace normal sleep are always well below that achieved when fully rested. So it's going to allow you to function, but probably still not allow you to function at your optimal level. But again, much better than putting yourself in a vulnerable situation. Now, there are many negative health risks of sleep deprivation, be they irritability, a difficulty concentrating, memory issues, hallucinations, you might have a weakened immune system, high blood pressure, you might be more easily stressed out, more anxious, things of that nature. Things that you don't necessarily want when you're already in a stressful situation. Now, I personally have experimented with polyphasic sleep before and biphasic sleep, and I found that they did allow me to function, but it is very difficult to establish a rhythm, especially if you have a hard time falling asleep. For a lot of people, the difficulty in doing something like this is having to routinely fall asleep and the time that it takes to actually fall asleep. If it takes you 15 minutes to fall asleep six times a day for your four to six naps a day, then that's a lot of time potentially wasted. So I'm going to tell you a simple trick that I use in order to go to sleep. And I should let you guys know that I am what they call a lucid dreamer meaning that I frequently have the ability to control my dreams. And I'm not making this up at all. When I dream, it's like going into virtual reality, only I'm the one who's writing the video game. Uh, I'm the guy who has sleep paralysis because it feels cool and I can get out of it at any moment. Lucid dreaming is when you are aware that you are dreaming and you realize that you are fully in control of everything you experience in that moment. Now, there is a state between consciousness and deep sleep, which is called the hypnogogic state, and that's known as the transitional state between consciousness and the unconscious. This is a depth of sleep that you achieve in the first half an hour or so of sleep. So it's not a very deep sleep. So if somebody was to awaken you from this hypnogogic state, it's not going to be like they awoken you from a very deep REM sleep or a deep delta based sleep where you are deep into your unconscious. And this is why you wake up feeling rejuvenated from power naps, because a quick 20 minute power nap doesn't allow you to go into that deep, deep state of sleep. Now, there's a lot of science to suggest that you need that deep sleep for a variety of reasons to help encode memories, to clean out the neurotoxins of your brain and a variety of other theories but if we're just talking about maintaining in the short term if you find yourself in an edgy three day four day long situation and you need to be alert then you're going to need to do this intermittent napping in order to always be at the ready so there's a strategy i use to fall asleep almost instantly 
and I'm going to tell you what that is today. Now, typically you want to be lying in a relatively comfortable position, but I've literally done this by being outstretched across three chairs in the staff room when there was no place for me to lie down. Okay, I can literally do this falling asleep at a desk if I need to. But what you want to do is be lying in a comfortable position. Uh, the light in the room is not going to matter that much, but the sounds might matter a little bit if they're not consistent sounds. And what you want to do is you close your eyes and I find if you want a lucid dream, it's better to lay on your back. Now there's some superstition around laying on your back that you're not supposed to do that because you let the bad spirits in or blah, 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 whatever. But um, I find that if I want to go lucid, the more I'm on my back laying down for some reason, I can lucid dream like crazy. Anyways, I close my eyes and I try to get into what I call the strike zone. Now, the strike zone is your ability to focus on one thing and one thing only. And it really doesn't matter what it is. You just want to have a focal point on one thing. But I'm going to give you something today that you can use to think about. Because thinking about this in particular, if, if you have a hard time controlling anxiety and your thoughts run wild while you're trying to go to sleep, you really need to try this. And you need to really understand this concept that I call the strike zone, okay? The goal is to simply think about one thing or nothing at all. Because thinking about one thing, that focal point or thinking about nothing at all is almost like a portal into the dream state. And it's only when you relinquish control of all of your other thoughts and all of the other sub vocalizations about everything that is going on in your life. It's only that you disband yourself from that, that you can focus on that strike zone, even for 10 seconds, if you can just hold a thought of nothing or just focus on that one thing for even 10 seconds, you will start to descend down into the dream state. Now, for example, what I typically will use is I'll think of a stop sign because a stop sign, naturally, if you're a person who drives, is going to elicit a, a stopping response. It's going to elicit the response of a resting state, but because when you come to a stop sign, it's not in your nature to go. So you don't want to imagine, you know, a green light or, you know, a guy shooting a gun saying go, you know, you want to imagine the exact opposite of that. You want to imagine something which is depressing or descending or stopping or arresting, resting. So thinking about something that you associate with a state of rest is going to be helpful. So if you're trying to imagine this stop sign, almost immediately you're going to find that your thoughts are going to go somewhere else. Within 1.5 seconds, you're going to be thinking about something else. If you can just pull it back to the strike zone, try to remain in that strike zone, try to focus on that stop sign. And you'll notice, even though for the first little while when you try this, you're going to find that you're thinking about thinking about keeping your thoughts in the stop sign. Even though that, that in itself is going to have the effect of calming you down. And like I say, if you can just hold it there for 10 seconds and then you'll lose it. And while you're trying to do this, you'll maybe go five seconds and then you'll, you'll come out of it, but you'll realize that you were almost sinking into the portal, but you pulled yourself out because you started thinking about something else. So you'll see that this actually does work. And I do believe that this is how people fall asleep is just by relinquishing control of the ego. Because if you think about it, what keeps us and any other animal awake or what awakens my dog when I snap my fingers, no matter how deep of a sleep they're in, is anxiety about the situation. It's a survival skill. So you want to have that. But as human beings, we have so much anxiety that it's hard for us to get to sleep. And we have so many words to describe, you know, all the bad things that could go wrong that it's hard for us to go to sleep. So getting into this strike zone is something you kind of have to train yourself to do. And I guarantee you, the more you do these power naps and this intermittent napping, the more lucid your dreams are going to be. And you'll find that when you are in a lucid dream state, if you are too conscious that you're in a lucid dream state, your mind will wake you up because there's something about consciousness that knows that your unconscious isn't real. So it, it doesn't want you playing a video game in your own head. There's, there's like some kind of natural aversion to that. 
So you kind of have to walk a fine line when you're lucid dreaming because you will wake up out of it because your mind knows that it's not real and you know that it's not real. So there's this idea that at any time you can wake yourself up. Anyways, we're kind of I don't want to get lost in the weeds of lucid dreaming. I'm certainly not an expert on it. I just know what I know based on my own personal experience. Some people will say you should focus on your breathing. For me personally, I find that focusing on my breathing just doesn't work. For some reason, it's just not enough. Now you can do this. And like I say, if you can focus on anything for even 10 seconds, just one thing, you're going to start to go through that strike zone, go through that portal into the dream world, and you're going to fall asleep. And you're going to be able to awaken yourself. Hopefully you have an alarm or something like that. If you awaken yourself at around the 20 minute or half an hour mark, you're going to feel refreshed when you wake up. Refreshed enough to get back to work. You know, it's not going to be the deep sleep that maybe you need. You're still going to suffer, you know, with chronic conditions as a result of doing this over and over again. So it's nothing that I would recommend during peacetime. But if we're talking about a post disaster environment, and you are the main man who's at the ready, and you have to be at the ready, then this is a pattern of sleeping that you may want to try to exercise. And I would encourage people to experiment with this a little bit. And I have to disclaim, of course, that you should only do so with the advice of your medical doctor or whatever medical expert you consult with. But it wouldn't be a bad idea to experiment with this and get acquainted with it because this is definitely something which could burn you out and which could cause problems in the irregular environment that would come after disaster strikes. Now, ideally, you would work in shifts, but that may not always be an option. You may be limited in terms of the manpower that's at your disposal. So this is something you may have to consider. So I would like people to let me know in the comment section below if this is something they've experimented with. And I'm also interested in people's thoughts about the abstract world of lucid dreaming and, and the dream state itself. I find it's a very fascinating topic outside of just prepping that I'm very intrigued by. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps.